This episode of the Off-Road Podcast is sponsored by Warren, Medical Gear Outfitters, and Colby Valve. Off-Road Podcast, episode 354, Trail Breakdowns. Tonight, Aaron takes a number, Jeremy does nothing, and Ben does some MacGyvering. Welcome to the Off-Road Podcast, a podcast about everything off-road. We cover the news, review products, and interview people in the off-road industry. Your hosts tonight are A.A. Ron, J.J. Aramy, and my name is Ben, and welcome to the show. Wow, that was really terrible. Ever feel like the uh, intro music just slaps you in the face? That's what I felt like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I forgot to turn it down beforehand. (laughs) I noticed. I think everybody noticed. Well, sucks to be you. The Weekend Review is brought to you by Medical Gear Outfitters. What are you waiting for? Are you waiting to have a casualty on the trail? Check out medicalgearoutfitters.com to get straightened out. Medical Gear Outfitters has everything you need, whether you're going out for the day or traveling on a year-long expedition. Head over there to get off-road specific kits that meet all of your needs. And while you're there, make sure you use Off-Road Podcast for 10% off. Well, Tim's already in the comments. Uh, He says, Jeremy, two weeks in a row. Is it Christmas? Because it seems too good to be true. So apparently Tim must not have got Christmas as a child because Christmas is too good to be true. Yeah. That's a punishment (laughs) there for us. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm back. I mean, I'm, I'm here. For I think most most weeks now. Thankfully, Olivia is mostly through her stuff. But speaking of it's medical, my turn. it's my turn next. I'm gonna take a hiatus. Oh, it's my okay. turn. <laughs> Break. You guys get breaks. <laughs> speaking of medical stuff, um, I got a crap ton of silvadine now. Yeah, that, that's that's the good stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, that's good burn stuff. Yeah, I got some of that when I burned my finger really bad. Aw, why, why is Tim saying bye? Oh, because I said I'm the next one leaving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, although it looks like he's handing a wad of cash with that emoji con, not like two hands clapping together, so I'm not sure. Oh no, that's a waving hand. Never mind, not a lot yeah. of cash. That's yeah. <laughs> a lot of cash. Yeah, and here's some of these pay, please. You're, you're really paying what you want to pay. pay. Yeah. Well, well, I'll start. I did. I did nothing. I drove a golf cart, but it was cart path only when I went golfing. Oh. So you didn't uh, off road. Oh a golf man, did I you get it on two wheels at least. No, but I did slide it down a hill really bad. <laughs> On a cart path? Yeah. So, I mean, it was pretty wet. Um, and there, there's a really steep hill. And at the top of the hill, they said slow. And so I was going slow. I was probably going like two miles an hour. And I probably slid like 20 feet mm. when I was trying to stop. <laughs> nice. How about you, Aaron? What have you been up to? Um, I haven't really done much at all. I still haven't looked into my truck to see why um, my winch isn't working. Uh, it's just kind of on the back burner. I'm not taking it wheeling anywhere anyways until I get new tires. And I'm still waiting on the wheels to show up. So I have hear that they've landed and maybe made it to Warren. But uh, they have not shipped out of Warren, at least not to me yet. So fingers crossed that they'll be here soon. Then I can order tires once I confirm that the wheels fit. Don't Don't you live like... 20 30 minutes from Warren well like an hour but um I don't I don't know if it's okay for me to just drive over there and demand my wheels there's my wheels yeah shout out to Leighton I hope I'm pronouncing that right Leighton um Leighton he's from Massachusetts so maybe you have to say it with a drawl well with a southern drawl he Massachusetts well he, yeah <laughs> maybe not Maybe not a drawl, an accent. Maybe that's what I'm looking for is accent. Yeah. He said close. So, uh, so yeah, what I did, I did nothing on my truck, but I did go camping. Um, we spent three days at a numbered campsite. So that's, uh, I took a number at a numbered campsite. Um, and, 
it was everything you can imagine a campground is that has numbers. So pretty boring. It was pretty boring. Not much nature happening. Although um, there was some very friendly deer. And uh, here's a picture of me hand feeding a doe at the campsite across from me. So um, I don't but, know if that's okay. Or, I don't know if that's okay or not. If you can just feed wildlife, if they care. I didn't see a sign in the immediate vicinity. So I just kind of went ahead and did it. I, I don't think you are, but uh, just elaborate for the listeners. What are you feeding that deer? Um, jelly beans, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah jelly beans uh i bought some jelly beans for my wife they were dunkin donuts brand jelly bellies that were supposed to be iced coffee flavor and she thought they were disgusting and everybody else i've given them to thought they were disgusting and so i decided to feed them to the deer but what was really funny was halfway through the deer eating this handful of jelly beans um it turned its head to look at something and this big a uh, big like drool slobber came off of its chin and went all the way to the ground. So it was like this big two foot long slobber drool coming off of it. And then it just went back to eating out of my hand. It was kind of funny. So <laughs> the deer enjoy the jelly beans. Aaron, you need one of these. I, I don't know. So, what that so is. that's a wheel offset measuring tool. So you uh -huh. set your, the size of your wheel and then you can check on whether or not the offset will work with your wheel. Then, oh, uh, that's pretty nifty. Yeah, I just uh, someone but shared it in one of the 3D printing groups today. How does that though take into account? Like, I know it's got offset, but every wheel is probably different on the inside of it, like the barrel of the wheel, where it well, might be thicker or more tapered or less tapered. That that should give you a minimum clearances, I believe, is how that tool's yeah. Designed. Well, Aaron okay. knows his minimum clearance is the wheels that he bought, but well, a seventeen inch with, but these are a zero a zero offset versus what were the, I think the factory Toyota ones are uh, a thirty, so it'll be like okay, will they work or not? Yeah, um, get the STL. Um, I'll see if I can. Yeah, that's a, that's okay. I mean. Once the wheels show up, they'll either fit or they won't. And I'm yep. not going to buy tires until I know that they fit. So that's kind of the thing. So Layton yeah. says that he's leaving uh, for a 300 day Jeep trip. Uh, that's pretty awesome. You'll have to uh, awesome. let us know where you're going. And then Brent says that he had a remote camping schedule that I could have gone on. So this actually, the purpose of this camp trip was to get my family out in our camp trailer that we bought and i saw that a friend had bought a camp trailer so i invited him to come and then he invited some more people who had camp trailers um everyone was overland bound members in this group and uh oh. so kind of funny so do you guys want to hear my favorite uh camp numbered campground experience yes yeah okay so we were camping in the olympics and uh there was this these two families that were near us and they both had kids around the same age probably like eight um one of the families had like an eight-year-old son and the other family had like maybe there were like 10 and eight uh so the son was probably 10 and the girl the other family had two girls like 10 and eight and one of the girls is is trying to get her to get her sister the younger girl is trying to get her older sister to kiss the boy and they're leaning in, and the younger sister is going da 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 da, and then the ten-year-old girl just gives the boy a double titty twister and runs away. <gasps> what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was the last time I stayed at a number campsite, I think, other than our Christmas mm. night trip. But I mean, we were kind Man, of when out there, so. When that happened with me, I actually got to kiss the girl, but I guess <laughs> well, I don't know. I was in first grade, not like an adult, and she was also in first grade. But she gave you a titty twister and then kissed you? Oh, no, we just the kissing part, no titty oh, twisters. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were kissing. saying after the titty twister, you got to kiss the girl. <laughs> 
<laughs> as your prize. No, just a kissing. Um, let's see. So Ben, um, do you need jelly beans over the weekend or what have you been doing? Um, so I, uh, we, we bought a, uh, another minivan. We did not sell my forerunner. How many do you have? How many do you have? Wait a minute. You said you bought We're back to three cars again. The wife was like, oh, we, we need that third. We need a vehicle to fit their kids and their friends. And so no, you don't, it's the perfect uh, reason not to drive the friends around. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> she flip flops on what she wants all the time. That's why we've gone. She's gone through uh, like eleven cars since we've been married, uh, and mm. I've gone through three. Okay, roof rack. Strap them to wow. the roof. <laughs> You're done. Yeah, I know. So, uh, but it had some problems, so I, I fixed uh, all the problems. Like a radio needed replaced, um, and then there's a sensor for the seats. The rear seats they're electric and i fixed it with a rubber band and then the camry got its uh battery warranted um and they didn't do a zero point calibration on it so i pulled out the paper clips and did that myself in the driveway you missed that so you, you did you did end up having to have your battery replaced again in the camry yeah. Oh, yeah. So I did mention that they came out. So they came out and then uh, they're like, unplug it. And then it wouldn't even start. So I, uh, they came out, they replaced it again. And then, like one of the wire, one of the connections was loose, but they just replaced the whole new battery. Um, and then, uh, but the ABS light was on again. And so I called my Toyota tech buddy up and I was like, hey, um, do you have the G scan tool so you can do this sensor? And he's like, Oh, it's just like a zero point calibration. Uh, do for it's plugs four and 12, I think it is, just like the forerunners for a zero point calibration. Very similar way to do it. Sat in the driveway, plugged in my paper clip and tapped it eight times, and boom, it was good to go. Weird. I, I feel like the least you could do is actually use a wire. Uh, a paper clip's easier. Is it though? Yeah, it's two paper clips cut yeah. into the shape of a, an L, and you put in the ends, and then they're like this, and then you tap it together. Yeah, but I times, and then the last time it holds together. I don't know. I still and, feel then, like and then, then you give your car a double titty twister. <laughs> titty twister it up. Yep. Um, outside of that, um, so we, uh, I worked on the so you remember the battery box i built i've decided that oh, yeah. I, need, I needed to upgrade it um i got tired of switching the batteries back and forth because i had another set of batteries um so i wired up two more batteries and the box is too small so i added a battery monitor and i upgraded to an mppt victron um solar charge controller and added some more plugs so on the very left i got my anderson plugs for my power in i've got three mm -hmm. 12 volt plugs on the side um the big ones the battery battery monitor and then there's a usb usb c um um usb standard plug and a usb c plug as well so i've got all the power on the inside, you showed the picture. They weren't connected. No, I, I just haven't finished wiring it. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I, so I haven't finished wiring it. I've still got some more work. Um, I wanted to kind of get you just, down where everything just was going to be. You just connect 12 volts to the back of 12 volts to the back of those, and it'll change it to like the five volts or whatever it is for a. Yeah. For it's a, a um, it's a, uh, it's got like the little. Charge. transformer transformer in it yeah okay cool neat yeah so j just uh here's the baseline so the next time we go snow camping and you try to run your heater on high are you gonna kill everything in like three hours again no um it, it would kill it in six hours but because <laughs> he doubled it because i doubled it but um i'm not gonna run my heater on high this time so so he learned his lesson. Maybe. Probably not. I'd probably do it just for shits and giggles. And Oops, it's dead. But um, you're freezing. 
I will actually have my cable to charge the battery off my car if I need to. So I've got options that I'll probably not use. <laughs> Let's see. Um, other than that, I drove across the state, went to um, Spokane. Uh, my wife's uncle got married. Um, so we went to a wedding and uh, hung out with some family. Uh, they were actually, um, the podcast got brought up and the video of uh, me going out on the scooter with you, Jeremy. <laughs> Apparently my wife shows that video to everybody. Kick, kick, kick. <laughs> so um, kick, it's, kick, it's quite kick, popular kick, to show kick. co-workers and family. Um, it got showed three times at the wedding. So she's like, Hey everybody, this look is at my husband. husband. He is so dumb. <laughs> that, yep. The next trip we do, we should make Ben take the scooter and he cannot ride with anybody else. <laughs> not <laughs> No support vehicles then, huh? No, we'll be there. We'll just be laughing and uh, we'll carry some tools and whatever parts you bring. Yeah. Actually, oh. you can do it kind of like Top Gear where Top Gear has that whatever vehicle that you have oh, to drive. Vehicle you... breaks down. Can't you have to sure. drive a scooter? Yeah. I have, to, I have to drive a Jeep if it breaks down. No, you have to drive the scooter if it breaks <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I like scooter it. Scooter on the back of the Forerunner. I uh, like four runner breaks down. You have to drive the scooter. Yes. I've, uh, the scooter's been sitting in the backyard, um, doing absolutely nothing. So maybe I should get it fixed. Hey, Hey Aaron, what can we sabotage on his vehicle? So that way he has <laughs> to, to make him <laughs> unplug his transmission sensor. Oh yeah. Perfect. I like it. <laughs> Such great, great friends. <laughs> Only well, at least we didn't break anything. Yeah. Sure. And it's easy to get to because you don't have any skid plates. Yeah. <laughs> Even, uh, actually, uh, that that topic got brought up. Um, I was talking to Pete. Um, yeah. Um, we're supposed to be working on those in the next month or so, maybe. Good. Maybe is good. You weren't there. It's well it's with all the work you put in on problem. his. With all the work you put on his tundra, I can think yeah. he's ready to weld them up for you. Oh no! It's 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 just been a matter of getting together has been our problem, and yeah, for more than an hour, if, unless we're camping. So, bring well, the welder camping. There we go. We also we also want to thank our sponsor, Patriot Patch. Head over to patriotpatch.co and check out their selection of great patches, shirts, cleaning mats, signs, and stickers. You can also join the Patch of the Month Club for 15 bucks and receive a patch, matching sticker, and artist proof each month. Uh, yeah, so Patriot Patch. This month's patch we mentioned last week is a... Is a uh, Memorial Day patch. It's not popping up for me. Is it popping up for you guys? There we yeah, go. Yeah, it's up on the screen. Maybe my maybe my internet is so slow it's not popping up. It's there now though. But yeah, we got a Memorial Day patch. Never forget the price of freedom. So, um, and I was corrected in the comments last week. I mentioned that this was maybe an M1 Garand. I didn't know for sure, but it's a Springfield 1903. Nice. Which. You'd think I would know because I have one, but mine is in a sportster stock, not in a military stock. So sporterized, sporter, sporterized stock. Yeah, not a sportster, sporterized. And mine definitely does not have a scope on it. Mine's got itsy bitsy peep sights, <laughs> and it kicks like a mule. I I was I was just picturing the itsy bitsy spider song, but the itsy bitsy peep sight. Yeah. Um, speaking of patches, though, um, I I know we mentioned it a while back, but we're we're working on a patch. Anybody want to talk about? Let's. How about we talk about one of the two patches? Uh, should we talk about the cool one or the other cool one? Aaron, Aaron, Aaron's hiding. So uh, I guess we're gonna the the patch we're gonna talk about is gonna be. Uh, we're coming out with the the lumen locker patch so we're going to do a, a patch shaped like a rocker switch 
that says uh, Lumen Lockers. So, um, yeah, that's uh, I'm looking forward to that. It was a fun idea. And now we're going to make it into a concept or into reality from a sticker to a patch. From a concept to a reality. Yeah. And I, I guess we have to thank uh, our resident non-locker, uh, Ben. Yeah, I love the Lumen Lockers. Right? Yeah. yeah, more lights than lockers. Yeah, I, I, I turned the... What, here, actually, I think I can find it here if I move quickly. There we go. I'm back, Tim. My dog was barking. Oh, I had to go beat beat the dog terrible with all of our faces on there yeah uh, yeah you really shouldn't have done that with a clear background it should have been a well yeah, that's okay it's designed for a sticker so yeah so yeah the lumen lockers will be a real thing soon enough yeah we'll get some lumen lockers oh tim's always good good for some good comments there yep have tire troubles ever left you deflated? Colby Valve has got you covered. Ever have a valve stem leak? Colby Valve makes reusable and easily replaceable valve stems that don't require you to remove your tire from the wheel. They work with your off-road rig, ATV, side-by-side, -side, commuter vehicle, or even your tractor. Never be left stranded again because of a busted valve stem. They also have a tire repair kit for those punctures that keep you away from doing your favorite thing, wheeling. Make sure to check out ColbyValve.com or ask for them at your local off-road product store. So, uh, did you guys hear about the guy in the F-150? A Raptor? The Raptor? Which guy, which guy with a Raptor? Well, he goes by the name <laughs> Chaz. And uh, <laughs> he's... Actually, let's, let's, let's watch the video first. All right, so for those of you who are not watching it but listening, um, it's an F-150. goes hits a jump pretty nicely, um, but he comes out and uh, hits the ground landing on all four wheels at the same time. He flat as a pancake, um, and he hit that. He he bottomed out. Um, apparently, uh, he was aimed for 60 miles per hour but may have gone beyond that he wasn't looking at the speedometer um the jump was nice and smooth but with how he landed um he damaged it he broke one of the i think it was his t14 vertebrae um they repaired it with two rods and six screws the truck is Ooh. fine but he isn't um i'm i'm shocked that he broke his back with that impact yeah like Okay, I'll okay. stop. It's, you can stop there. <laughs> it does yeah. not look that bad to break. It doesn't. Back. It yeah. doesn't. I feel like if it was bad enough to break somebody's back, like the airbag should have deployed. There should have been some damage to the yeah. vehicle. Like, so, so I, I think he's got something going on where he has really bad bones. Yeah, the he has drinks, uh, milk. Fourteen yeah. inches of travel, and that wasn't enough to help him. Um, he, there was actually another video that he had shared that was before where he wasn't going as fast and he landed nice and smoothly. Um, but yeah, uh, he, in the, the interesting thing is he wasn't the only off-roader, um, that landed in the hospital with a back injury that weekend. Apparently, hmm. uh, another driver hit the same jump at about the same speed with an identical truck and was <laughs> with this oh, goodness. as well. I oh was, my yeah. So not, not only does the Raptor break one man's back, but it broke two. Seems like a fatal flaw. Yeah. I mean, if if the if the vehicle could drive away completely unharmed, like wh what the heck? How is I, that? I, I think what it is is it was all of it coming down at once, so all that momentum. Um, was was this the AARP? Uh, <laughs> <awful>? <laughs> Off-road club. Uh, but, so Tim says, Tim says maybe he compressed his spine, and we should probably trust Tim's opinion because I think he's a nurse. I don't remember exactly what Tim does, but I think he's a nurse at a hospital. 
like where he changes people's betting and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So yeah. Um, I was, maybe someone should get him some like progressive bump stops or something for Christmas. I I'm 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 wondering if that would have helped with that. So uh, even some like Timberins, if that would have helped, mm -hmm. just slow it down a little bit more. Um. But yeah, two guys. I Ouch. Yeah. Well, I guess we can move on. The Jeep Magneto 2.0. Yes. Uh, did you guys see pictures of that? Yeah, but you should share them. Oh, yeah. So the the new Magneto 2.0, uh, it's got 625 horsepower, uh, 825 uh, foot-pounds of torque. It's a stick shift. Yeah, it is a stick shift. Look at that. How, wait, yeah. how is that a stick shift with an electric motor? No, it's I'm got kidding. a six-speed manual transmission sourced from a, a charger with a Hellcat. Um, they they it. them. It's, they it's them. just like replacing the engine with the electric motor. Yeah, correct. Which is the best way to do it because then um, you save all the Jeep stuff. Yeah, well, they, they were saying... All the aftermarket Jeep support. Yeah, they were saying that um, the clutch only really works to move the shift knob between gears doesn't really serve a purpose um since you can realistically start off in any gear off the line well i mean yeah but you still needed to move in between gears yeah yeah so you mentioned that the six speed was from a hellcat right? and yeah yeah um, which it's going to need that beef beef right there because of, that's a lot of torque going to that transmission. Um, and they changed the first gear. They dropped it from a 513 to a 316, a 336 to kind of give it a granny gear. Huh. Isn't that the... That's yeah, the, that's the, the opposite. They want to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that is. Yeah, maybe maybe yeah. it has so much maybe it has so much low in torque that they can do that. Yeah, it had had too much low in torque. I'm sure they had to. Yeah, yeah. it bro broke first gear in the first. Well, I mean, it was probably very. As soon as you started to let the clutch out, it probably just jerked you backwards. Yeah. Uh, um, it's got a rock trans a rock track transfer case, um, to give optimal torque to all four wheels. Dana axles front and rear, along with some massive I, king coilovers. I, I hope that those are Dana 60s. Um, because that much torque is I, just gonna destroy. I I would hope that it would get some Dana 60s. Um or probably even I would probably even go a 6080, if I'm honest, with that much that much torque. Yeah. Yeah. It it's that's a whole lot of torque. It's not just the horsepower, there's a whole lot of torque. Right, and, uh, and if you if you notice from this picture, it's a two wheel drive. It's got um, a wheelbase that's twelve inches longer than the standard two door. Hang, hang on a second. You just said it's two wheel drive, but it's got the front. I, I, diff. I'm sorry, two two, two door. Two door. Okay, can okay. I can I pause you right there for a second? Full width bumper on the front. Come on. Well, it came out of Jeep, didn't it? So they have they probably have to do that. But come on. Yeah, yeah it's I probably agree. a factory thing. Yeah. Yeah. There better be some cut lines on that where you just you can trim the bumper and it actually looks decent. Well, you could probably just unbolt it. Unbolt the wings, unbolt the wings off of it. Oh yeah. yeah. Right there. I like yeah. I do like that that seven dash grill light between the two headlights. That'll probably be a new Jeep fad. I you know what? I, I like that too. Um, because it's not like an over the top light bar, but yeah, I, I'm, well, I, I doubt they do anything. They're probably just marker lights. Yeah, it does look kind of cool though, and yeah. I like those wheels too. I like how the the spokes are way out and the hub is inset. I think that's kind of nifty. It's different. Yep. yep, those are some uh, Falcon uh, Wild Peaks uh, MTs on there. So yeah, nice, nice tires. Um, it's a uh, it's on 40 inches of tires. Um, what does the hood scoop do? Um, it's what probably it? cool the batteries. Cold so, air intake. Well, so it's it's got four different cells to spread out the battery cells to spread out the uh, weight 
from the batteries um because it's got that what seven seventy kilowatt hour battery pack um and they mentioned that two of the cells were under the hood so it might be to help cool those cells um there's probably a radiator um blowing some coolant around those batteries to help keep them cool so i i know you mentioned that the clutch only works to shift between gears but i feel like with that much amount of torque and instant torque you'd probably burn through clutches Hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Uh, well, they were saying that most likely. Um, so the Magneto is on track to actually go into production. Um, the what? Magneto. Magneto. I heard Magneto. I said Magneto. But um, they they were saying that it's on on, on track to go into production um, as an actual production vehicle. Uh, hence why they had a 2.0 this year. Um, with the success, they're saying the success of the 4XE that they want to do a full electric version. Um, okay. So, but they said most likely it'll end up with a, a two speed automatic transmission. Am uh, I missing something? I thought the 4XE was. It's a hybrid electric. Oh, okay. oh it's a hybrid. Okay. Four yes. by E. Four by E. XE. Yeah. I know. Um, so, um, the Magneto's, so the guy who, who wrote this article, he's done a lot of electric vehicle testing. He said that the brake, the Magneto's brake regen worked better than any of those he's tested. Um, hmm. So, I mean, that's kind of a win-win for everyone because if you're going down a hill and you're using the uh, engine brake, well, the regenerative braking going down a hill, that's going to charge up your batteries while you're crawling. So you'll get it potentially a little bit better range doing that and that does look God. like you're getting a 60 up front i, I oh. don't know any different that's the dana um axle cover so yeah um so yeah i i it looks pretty interesting it'll be yeah. great to see them come into production if if and when they do i i think the idea of having a manual would actually bring some people back to jeep um for a manual wrangler that's electric if they left for something else like say they decided that they wanted a hummer or uh, uh what's the other one uh someone else makes an electric one not uh, um an electric uh truck and all that uh the rivion so like oh yeah. yeah 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 they're like oh I can get a manual Jeep that's electric I'll go for that gotcha so, so yeah pretty interesting I uh, I really got a kick out of this article too go prepared with Warren Industries they produced the first recreational winch in 1959 and lead the industry with their dedication to quality and reliability when you dig yourself in deep make sure you have the right tools to get yourself out. Get worn equipped and go where others can't. Now, let's get ready for adventure and head into our main topic. Well, tonight, uh, our main topic is talking about trail breakdowns. So uh, this Call show Rick. is this show is dedicated to Ben and <laughs> the solution to all our answers are use Rick's AAA. Yep, Use <laughs> that is that is the number one thing to go with. Um, uh, Rick's AAA, he'll get you there. Home, yeah, home. he'll get you. He'll get you home. Call Rick, he'll get you home. Yeah. Um, but no, you have a Rick. You need to have a solution, right? Yeah. When you that's right. When you don't have a Rick, you need a solution. So uh, these are in no uh, particular order. This uh, and it's a giant list of stuff we're going to go through. Some of them should go pretty quick. Other ones, uh not the other ones are going to be a little more complicated as we talk our way through them. So the first one's a dead battery. So, and the idea behind this is you're not at home trying to fix this. You're on the trail, you're out wheeling, you're out camping. Um, you're not in a shop where you have all your tools and everything like that. So that's kind of how we're thinking about fixing these issues. So first one's a dead battery. Who wants to take dead battery? Uh, I'll take it. Cause it's really easy. All right. Jumper box, jumper cables, 
Um, other than that, you're going to need a new battery, right? Yeah. What if, uh, hmm. What if you're a long ways from home and your battery's like dead, dead? Ooh. Is there someone there to jump off of? Yeah. Solo. So if there's someone there to jump off of, um, I've seen two AKs used as uh, jumper cables if you don't have the jumper cables. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess maybe if you get it, maybe your charging system will keep you going. You just turn everything off, use the minimal uh, lights, turn your radios off. Your I, I Realistically, your off. alternator could get you home. Yeah. Um, but you're not going to want to stop. I guess maybe how about the flip side is what if your alternator goes out? Um, what do you do then? So now you only have a battery. Ooh, I've had to do this. Um, surprise, surprise. Um, you can drive down the road as far as you can go till you run out of power and then you use whoever's with you. Um, they charge up your battery with their, their battery, uh, their alternator essentially. Um, if you're fortunate and they've got the same vehicle, so the same batteries size, swap, swap batteries. Yeah. And swap batteries back and forth. Um, uh, not yeah. fun. Takes a long time. Um, mm -hmm. and you'll probably kill the batteries and you'll probably kill the batteries by discharging it so much. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But at all least right, Jeremy. This yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. cheap. Probably it's cheaper to buy two batteries than it is to pay for a tow truck. Well, especially to an off-roading area. Yeah. 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 If you can get yourself out to the road, then then you're kind of, that's a good time to send someone off to go buy a new battery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if, it, if you've got a common size battery, um, should be pretty readily available at any parts house. I think most batteries are pretty commonly sized and pretty easy to yeah. find if you're not worried about what the battery is. Yeah. I, and I think if you're focused on getting home, you're not worried about what the battery is. You're nope. focusing on getting home. You'll take whichever yep. one gets you there. Uh, so the next one here, and I, I realize why you guys gave this one to me, because uh, it tends to be a Jeep problem, but steering boxes. Yes. And uh, specifically with the Jeep, there's the sector shaft. Um, if your steering, steering box blows up uh, or your sector shaft breaks, you're kind of SOL. You really need to have an extra steering box. Um, but if you have a winch, you can very slowly uh, use the winch to turn your vehicles or keep your wheels straight to uh, get yourself home. Yeah, Did very carefully. No, he didn't freeze. He's oh, just like, how do you do that? Yeah, I'm listening intently how you're winching your steering. Or do you just mean you winch yourself around a corner? to just turn no you can you can hook up your winch to one side of your uh Trigling. like specifically on the jeep you can hook up your winch to one side of your steering uh, okay and you can at least turn you know that you direction. can you can loosen your winch or tighten your winch to kind of turn um I see. you're gonna have to disconnect and reconnect that winch a lot uh to actually get where you're going but it will get you there eventually um, if you don't have a uh, have a steering box. And really the best way to, to fix that, uh, which uh, Tim mentions, is to uh, get a new steering box that's a little bit stronger. Um, yeah. Or hydro steer or hydro assist. Yeah. Uh, a sector shaft brake uh, or sector shaft brace would help protect that sector shaft. Um, yeah. But... but you're kind of just better off going with a new steering box or it, it's a band-aid on, on, on a band-aid preventative yeah, it's, versus it's, uh, doing an upgrade. It, gotcha. It's like, do you, do you want to have, you know, a top of the line part or a bottom of the line part, the bottom, bottom tier parts going to be, I, I lost where I was going with this. It's going to be better than nothing, but it's it's not as good as, as yeah, good better than nothing. Good part. Yeah. yeah. Well, the next one is a rollover. So this isn't necessarily a breakdown, but you've rolled your rig. Um, so you roll your rig. Once you've got it upright, do not immediately start your rig. You've yeah. probably got some oil that has now gone from your 
oil pan and now filled your piston cylinders. <laughs> I like it, Tim. Better than nothing, like a Toyota. Um, you got some oil that has now filled your cylinders, and if you try to start it, you're gonna try to compress fluid, which doesn't compress, and you're gonna break your engine, um, which is not good. So, roll your truck over, pull your spark plugs out, let it sit for a while, and then uh, um, maybe it'll drain down. If it doesn't, crank it over, and it'll squirt oil out all your. Uh, spark plug holes and make a wonderful mess for you still better than uh hydro locking your engine with the oil yeah absolutely unless you really need to hydro lock that engine because you kind of want to upgrade anyways and you're like ah oh, sorry babe good it time broke. To swap <laughs> yeah um, okay. it's uh, uh some, something that if you've got paper towels or something you can always shove them in the spark plug holes to kind of try help. to catch catch some of that yeah uh, i feel like but, those are just gonna come shooting out as well probably probably but I but mean, it'll it'll catch it from oil. spraying some and then uh so once you've done that you put your plugs back in and um check all your fluids now because who knows where some of them might have gone and uh then you can fire it up in there and see how it does yeah well here's the fun one a broken drive shaft um well the easiest solution is uh is pull that sucker off it's eight bolts generally and uh you're down to two wheel drive if you're driving a four wheel drive or no wheel drive if you <laughs> if you're unfortunate enough some drive shafts though uh you can't just pull it out and keep driving like you'll uh lose your um transmission fluid out the back of the tail shaft oh for uh, a two-wheel drive no for four-wheel drive so like my truck has a yoke so if you pull that yoke out as part of the okay. drive shaft and but the drive shaft holds the yoke in so if you took that out you'd lose your fluid i don't know if you can just stuff a rag in there and hope that it catches most of it i don't know yeah i mean if it gets you off the trail to yeah get towed there's your solution yeah and you're not necessarily driving home i mean some some vehicles you can you can take the drive shaft out and drive it home absolutely but not all the vehicles so you got to just be careful of that yeah um, but, but i i would i would use this as a most of these are to get you off the trail so that yes can trailer home or whatever it be yeah. home um or get to a uh, a shop to repair it yeah but that obviously just, if you have the spare parts any of these trail fixes uh just becomes a normal fix yeah that's true I mean, if you're worried about uh fluid pouring out the back i mean you could probably take a, a stick with a rag and jam it in there to help kind of create a seal <laughs> like that you just put the like stick that. in what, yeah. well you put the rag around well, it to kind of give it a seal to make it thicker okay yeah. so it'll fill the holes the the gap better yeah okay um well so another thing depending on how your drive shaft is broken if it's just bent you can beat it back so it's not like if it's got a big tweak in it and it's hitting the underside of your vehicle you can bend it back a little bit and obviously you can't drive at a high speed but you can still drive it at low speed with a with a bent drive shaft yeah but as as you go faster and faster that unstable can potentially break and cause more damage. So do yes, it's going to vibrate. Definitely do not drive at high speeds with an unbalanced drive shaft. It will probably destroy your transfer case at the minimum. Yes. Yeah. Have you seen those transfer cases where they're just split and cracked and stuff? Yeah. yeah. Not good. Yeah. Grenaded. Not yeah. a good thing unless you want to convince the wife to buy an Atlas transfer case for your Jeep. In there you case, go, though. Yeah, it. yeah. Send it. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. the transfer case just broke. I gotta buy a new one. Might as well upgrade. All oh. right, Jeremy. Um, I'm not sure how you would know anything about this since you drive a Jeep and you have plastic windows. But what happens if you break your window out on the trail? Plastic windows. What are you Aren't talking about? about? Or don't you have plastic windows all the way around except for the windshield? No. Don't they roll up or something? No, not on my Jeep. I mean, maybe if you have half doors. 
a soft top yeah, and a soft top. Yeah. No, but broken windows. Um, I mean, I, I think kind of the best way to fix that is with some duct tape and cardboard. Okay. It's usually the what best way. What if it's raining and we're in the Pacific Northwest? That That's why you have d enough duct tape to cover the whole cardboard. Oh, I see. All yeah. the way up. The cardboard just provides rigidity. Okay. And duct tape provides the uh, water sealant. Um, a, a trash bag over that cardboard would help too. Well, I mean, use I less mean, duct tape. if you just covered it in duct tape, then it would probably yeah. be fine. Yeah. But the most important part about when you break your window on the trail, clean, clean up, up the glass. glass. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, make sure you clean up that yeah. glass. Um, or I mean, if it's just a nice day, and depending on when what window it is, you know, just it's true. kind of roll with it. it. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if it's pouring down rain, then you probably want to find a way to seal that up. But yeah, and if it's a Jeep, it. it's uh, it's it's fine getting it wet inside. It can all dry out. It leaks anyway. <laughs> Not all of them leak. Just pull the plugs in the floor, right? Yeah, I'd, if, I'd rather my top leak. Yeah, than most my uh transfer Your boss engine or yeah <laughs> yeah uh so the next one we've got is a flat tire and uh shout out to ben for putting this one in there for us lots of experience <laughs> but usually ben's flat tires are uh exploded tires not a uh yeah nail so, so if you've got like a a small enough hole in your tire you can do a simple plug um yeah you can I mean, heck if it, i've it, seen large gashes and in, in sidewalls be plugged with a yeah with plugs you just gotta have enough of them yeah well yeah. i'm i'm saying safely for well, tight. again We're half, getting of, off the trail. half of these fixes are exactly getting off the trail getting to a place where you can get some more help yeah so um obviously you can shove a ton of them in you can even fix a sidewall um, but it's not going to be safe to drive on the road. Um, always throwing on your spare tire. If you're smart enough to have a full size spare. Um, if you're not, then good luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I'm always an advocate of a full size spare. Um, yeah. you can only fix a tire so much, especially if it's exploded. Yeah. Um, speaking from experience. Yeah. I so mean, do if what do you guys take on this? You, you just got a puncture. Let's just call it a puncture. You're on the trail, not on the highway. Are you going to bust out the tire repair kit? Or are you going to take your, you're going to replace it? Um, I mean, that that's kind of a hard thing. Cause some, uh, most tire repair shops or most tire shops will not work on your tires. If they see that it has one of the trail plugs. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, yeah, I I would, I would, I would swap it out and fix it, and then if I were to lose another one, I'd plug it and then run that gotcha. one. If I, I've one never heard that sustained enough damage. Yeah, I would probably do the same. Um, if, if you have the spare, go ahead and, and throw the spare on. But I mean, even with a with a gash, a sidewall gash, there are ways to repair that tire. That's uh, safer than um, than just filling it with plugs. I mean, you you can actually stitch a tire back together. Um, now they make big, they make big vulcanized patches that you can put in from the inside of the tire as well. Yeah, but most of the time you have to stitch it together and then put the vulcanized patch on. Correct. So the, the stitch provides the rigidity, and then mm -hmm. the vulcanized patch uh, seals it up. Now, yeah. Does that sound like something I want to do on the trail? Absolutely not. Like that sounds terrible. Uh, I'll, but if you've I'll, already gone through a spare tire, you might need to. Yeah. You might need to. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, if you're running in a group with guys that run the same size tires as you, and uh, like if you're running with a bunch of Jeep guys, there's there's enough spares there, hopefully, to go around. That's true. Not a lot of spares from mine, though. No, nope. <laughs> should be if they're all on forties. Yeah, if, well, if they're on forties, tons, forties and tons. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, and you have an eight lug. Yeah, it's the problem. Otherwise, you're otherwise you're debeating a tire and moving it over to a different wheel on the trail. Yeah, yeah. with yeah. lot with bead yeah. locks. Yeah. Yes, if they're not bead bead locks. Then good yeah. luck debeating that tire enough to 
High the lift jacks. Yep. Oh, yeah. Lots, lots of fun. I lots think I would rather do a lot of other things before I had to take a tire off on the trail. Yeah. Off, off yeah. of a wheel. Yeah. Well, speaking of wheels, broken wheel is our next one up. So you've uh, come off an obstacle, you're aired down, and you just smash that wheel hard. So either you've broken your wheel or you've dented it really good. Um, a broken wheel would probably be like an alloy wheel. A dented yeah. wheel would be a steel wheel. So I always have run steel wheels because uh, the internet told me that if you ever smash an alloy wheel, it breaks. But if you have a steel wheel, it just bends and you can bend it back on the trail. So that's why I've just run steel wheels. In fact, I had alloy wheels on my truck and I sold them to get my steel wheels. Um, I don't know if they're any better or not. Um, they haven't bent or broken, so I'm good. Uh, so I haven't had to beat them back, but I have heard of people using like a splitting maul or an ax to pound their steel wheel back into shape. So that's one way you could do it, but you're going to be, uh, once you get back to civilization, it's going to be unbalanced and things like that. Um, it'd probably be best if you went on your spare is my opinion for that. Yeah. And if you've, if you've broken the wheel, you're on your spare because there ain't no fixing yes. this. I don't, you're, uh, you might be Jake able to weld up. Yeah, you might Jake be able to maybe wield it. If you've got all the pieces, if it's shattered into pieces. Yeah. That would be a fun uh that'd be fun. Be a good experiment. Yeah. Yeah. Can you Tim, be Tim able says to back together? Tim said he's seen a guy bend back two steel wheels in one trip and it worked fine. I'm super curious what steel wheels were so flimsy that he bent two of them, or maybe he wheels that hard. Maybe he's just a hardcore crawler. I don't know. I, I mean, it could be older, like Jeep wheel, like old, what were they, the five spokes or whatever, D windows. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, he could have, he could have jumped his, uh, his Raptor and, and <laughs> yeah. ah, front and there's back. a front, front and back reel that hit the same rock. Oh, my oh. goodness. Uh, so oh, he was going, he was going fast. Speed yeah. kills. Speed kills. Ask well. Ben. Yes, it does. That's how you jump your forerunner. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, the next one's my favorite one because uh, I've I've been offering for years to slash my slash my valve stem um, because uh, a, a broken valve stem. Um, we've got the easiest fix for this, and that's going to be a Colby valve. Um, yeah. That that's super easy. Insert from the outside. Uh, you can tighten it down by hand. Throw some air in, and you're good to go. Um, now, what what if you can't use Colby valves on your wheels? What would you do then? Oh, then you then it's gonna be not as fun. Um, hopefully, you've got a spare valve stem. Um, you've got to debead that tire. Throw the valve stem out. Have the do special you? tool, huh? But do you? Oh, I guess you could throw like. Uh, what would you do? That's a good question. Uh, they actually, I can't remember the name of this, uh, but they actually make a a tool to put in a valve stem from the outside. It's kind of like a funnel. Um, and you, you basically just shove, you grease up the valve stem really well. You shove it through the funnel, which compresses the rubber until it can fit through the valve stem hole. Um, and then it goes all the way in. You pull, you pull the funnel out and then you have to pull the valve stem back in to where it seats properly. Uh, but mm -hmm. there is a way to do it. That sounds like a lot of tools that I don't want to carry. I'd rather just go. Yeah. A little tiny Colby valve. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if the Colby valves work for your, your wheels, but some, they don't work on every wheel. Oh, are you saying like maybe the, uh, the alloy metal is too thick or something like that? Um, or, well, or the, or the location the, where it sets. So I, I guess the fix for that would be by the permanent Colby valve valve stems instead of the rescue valve stems. Um, oh, with the deep the wing, yeah. the wing nut on the on some of the or on the the rescue ones uh, is sometimes too big to fit where the valve stem is. Gotcha. I see. Which yeah. is why, and, and you can um, if you have the tire repair kit that Colby valve comes with. Um, it actually has the uh, per permanent valve style nut and uh, spacer in there, as well as the rescue cap. So you just need a, I think it's a 10 or an 11 millimeter wrench. 
better not be 11. <laughs> it's probably better well, not be who, in. <laughs> carry, who carries an 11? Well, he also said 10 or 11 inch, not no, no inch. No, I said a a socket. Oh, I heard inch. Uh, yeah, I, I thought I heard. Yeah, I don't think I heard inch either. Okay. I like Tim's answer to this. I bought the permanent ones because if I have to use one, it's going to stay there because I'm too lazy to fix it later. Yes, 100%. Yeah. A, trail hey, fix can, a trail fix can be a permanent fix I, I, if, I you, did if find, you leave it long enough. Yes, that is that is true. Or if you fix it well enough, that's yeah, yeah. good enough. <laughs> so I, I found the thing I was looking for. So um, you can kind of see the, the funnel there. Um, you, you have to the shove funnel. it all the way through that. Whoa. Yeah. So you, you, you put this, you screw this little tool onto the, uh, onto the valve stem and then you shove it through the funnel and then you pull it back out and then you take everything away and then it's fixed. Yeah. Sounds like, sounds like a headache. And that's more, and that's three times the price of a Colby valve. That's true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd probably rather just use a Colby valve as well, but there are ways. Yeah. There are other, ways. other ways. What you're saying, yeah. Yes. Well, our next one is uh, frame damage. Um, how do you get frame damage if you don't live in the rust belt? You jump your forerunner onto oh, a That's a good and you like uh you taco your frame or something or yeah. you're towing too much and you taco uh, your you frame drive a jeep with two the wrong size shocks and then your stuff slamming and you taco your jeep Slap. or your or your I, colorado yeah i don't have a really good suggestion on how to fix a frame damage because you're not like um you're not straighten that on the trail that i know of so, I mean, the only frame damage I think you're going to really need to fix on the trail and can fix on the trail is if you crack your frame. Yes, I can yeah. see that. Absolutely. If there's a and, crack that you can weld up, you could put yeah. something plated over it. Uh, there's and, all those cool trail hacks where people use like their wrenches or something to to add add some structure to things. Yes, and, and that's really what you got to do if, if you have any sort of frame damage that you got to fix before you can get off the trail is you definitely need to yeah. weld it. There's yeah. no way around it. Unfortunately. So broken CVX, I'm going to take this one also because I experienced this when I was in Colorado, um, wheeling hard in Colorado. Um, I literally broke the, C the end of the cv i didn't snap a shaft i didn't uh twist the shaft it just broke the the knuckle of the cv um and you just remove and replace is what you do or if you don't have one to replace you just remove some sometimes you can just remove it depends on the style once again just like the drive shaft it may leak all your fluid out so you can't always do that yeah, um, I have um, heard people. I've heard of people cutting the or just shoving the broken part in to fill the hole because it's like a C clip style. The one on the Nissan Titan, which is what I'm running in my Frontier, is bolted on. So if yeah, you my, unbolt it, you're good. My my Forerunner is a uh, C clip style. So when I broke it um, when, on the faithful November trip, I uh, I just left the end in. Uh, and pulled the rest of the shaft out from so it wasn't flopping around causing yeah. more damage. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> um, kind of rolling into the next one uh, for the real off-roading vehicles who are talking about generally a broken axle shaft, not just a CV axle shaft, but um, again, kind of with that, I mean, obviously, if you, can, if you have the replacement, that's going to be better, but um, or, or just a replacement U joint if you just broke the U joint. But again, you know, you can kind of pull it out and, uh, plug the hole. Uh, now the problem is with a, like, if you have a semi float axle, um, generally speaking, you're going to break something else if you ever try to do that. So like, if you do it on the front, um, 
you might run through a unit bearing uh, pretty quick. Again, I probably wouldn't do it on the highway because uh, the unit bearing kind of typically needs a little bit of that tension from the axle shaft um, to try to hold it together a little bit. But that's where it's nice to go, if, especially if you're replacing your axles. Uh, definitely try to find something that's a full float um, where you can just pull the axle completely and then uh and then go ahead and and uh and just plug the hole and then you can just run without it yeah thanks tim uh case in point with the uh with the unit bearings on the on the tjs yep so uh our next one here i've experienced this uh leaking radiator um, let's let's go some old school grandpa hacks for this one. An egg in the radiator. Uh, yeah. And, 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 and bulk or are they different? You can do an egg or pepper. Um I, I would do one or the other. Um okay, pepper, not for really. like smaller stuff. But what if I like my eggs with pepper? You know, <laughs> depending upon what your leak problem is, you might need both, right? Um it, I, I've seen like pepper used for like smaller leaks, like pinhole leaks. Mm -hmm. um, for like longer trips, but the egg um, was for like your larger leaks. Um, still, it's only going to stop so much, um, and you're going to have fun cleaning that later. Uh, yes, yeah, which is why if you can't, maybe you should try something like a steel stick. Yeah, steel or stick or bars yeah. leak. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so depending upon what it is, some uh, what's it called? Uh, JB Weld. Yeah, JB Weld would be better. Yeah, if if you're leaking in one of your radiator fins, you can try to crimp it that with too. some needle yeah. pliers. Yep. Um, and then maybe just JB Weld just the end of the the crimped part, something like that. Yeah. Speaking of things leaking, what what would you guys do for a leaking gas tank? Say you like dropped your your vehicle on a rock and put a crack in it what would you guys or, do for that or when you were young you lived in tacoma and you jumped your cadillac and it bottomed out because there were 16 people in it and it tore a hole in the gas can gas well, tank. Are, I, i'm not talking about a I, hole hypothetical hypothetical I, i'm talking like a crack well so that person used bubble gum okay bubble gum um, and i as far as i understand it lasted for quite a while <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah depending upon the size of the hole i mean something like bubble gum uh steel stick jb weld uh, the, the jb weld stick is what i'm i'm talking about um yeah. there's so, go ahead yeah, i was gonna say there's some other like putty stuff like that that'll work you, you know what works really good if it's kind of a small crack leak huh it's some uh irish spring soap Oh, I vaguely remember hearing about that. Wow. Yeah. So whatever that soap's made of doesn't get dissolved by the gasoline and you just rub it on the outside and it fills the hole and it's usually that's enough to get you hmm. back back home. Now, that's I wonder true. if I wonder if that's just a marketing play by Irish Spring. I don't think so. I've S actually seen soap, it before. The soap to operators. Yeah. Well, 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 watch how many guys buy Irish Spring now and shove it in their tool bag. Yeah, don't a lot use that of people. Sure. A lot of people carry it for that purpose. And no. plus, if you want to go take a take a bath in the river, you know, you yeah, got some. It's ready to go. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I actually have a bar of that in my go bag. Yeah, well, I mean, you'd probably need the Irish Spring after this next one, which would be a punctured oil pan. A uh, very similar solution would be probably the uh, um, JB Wells. JB Weld it. We've seen it, Aaron. You and I. The Gambler, Gambler 500. Yeah. Yep. Guy pulled his pan off and uh, um, created he a hammered it back out. He hammered it back out first. Like he took it off and hammered it out. Yeah. It's still got that patch, too. I, wow. The Brothers Hoff own that rig now. Or they did. Oh, really? Okay. And I, I would try to clean off as much oil as you can. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. You need you need a stick, so you got to clean it. Um, maybe even like have some steel wool or something to scratch at it, so it will yeah. bite better. Yep. And then um, 
You're gonna have to replace all that oil, obviously. Yes. It, no. It, really? Yep. Yeah, you got to put it back. Yep. I thought you just pulled the pulled the cover off and just sent it. I mean, to get home, maybe. And need to replace the engine. Yeah. I don't. Have you guys seen like the videos where it's like a, a short video where a mechanic has to change the. Oh yeah. Uh, oil pan plug mm -hmm. and they put a vacuum on the oil yep. fill and the vacuum holds the oil from leaking out and it's just going <laughs> right at the hole and they can take that plug out and put a new plug in i have seen that but i don't think that's going to work if you remove the whole pan the whole Sorry. pan probably I, not I, yeah you don't I, have enough I, I, suction i don't think it would work to hold the um while you're driving either because of the pressure created from the engine moving. Yeah. yeah. No. And yeah. I don't know where you're going to get a vacuum that powerful while you're off-roading. Well, and, and plus if you were, if, if you're running the engine, it's going to be splashing up at the cap and you'll just start sucking up all the oil. Over time. <laughs> Tim says he needs to start carrying enough oil to refill his. He's been bad about that. He usually only carries a quart. I usually um, just carry a one gallon jug instead of a quart. Um, I've, I usually carry two quarts. I mean, honestly, you just got to go with enough friends because if, if you're just trying to get home, you, you don't need the exact oil you need for your engine. Just close enough. Yeah. 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 Especially if you're in a summer trip or a winter trip and stuff's not cooling down long enough to where, where that viscosity matters that much. Right. What yeah. What's the difference? Like, like you just said, summer trip or winter trip and, so uh, just, uh, winter, winter doesn't winter. oil get thicker when it's cooler i, I mean yeah. it does but when you say summer trip or winter trip like you've gone to either extreme and yeah. i feel like now you've just said trip. oh i think i figure a winter trip it might matter a little more if the engine's gonna cool down the viscosity like yeah i mean start. it's probably not good for your engine if like you've got the wrong oil in there anyways w20 and you have oh you only have like you know 20 w60 or whatever but yeah. you know you put your gear oil in it some uh yeah <laughs> i i wouldn't recommend doing that but i heard you can thin it out with gasoline just put some gasoline in with your oil i think it'll be I, fine i don't think you should do that either yeah. water. If you're gonna thin it you use water then use water to thin it. opinions of the off-road podcast you're not those <laughs> yes, uh, thank which, you. which are, Wait, are definitely thought, good ideas for you to use i well, thought you guys did everything with sprite Ooh, sprite huh there you go. uh so uh our next one here is uh brake lines and uh I, I know a little bit about that um just run without brakes you can do it um use some engine engine braking once again once again the views and opinions expressed <laughs> by the podcast are usually wrong yeah so um uh, depending upon the brake line a uh, hard brake line you can crimp it off with some uh, vice grips soft brake line you can too but <laughs> i feel like that's the summer and winter trip again I, all I mean, brake lines you can crimp I, never, with vice grips i've never seen the the vice grips on a soft line I haven't I, either. I have. Well, I take it back. I have seen it in mechanics videos, but usually there's not someone stepping on the brake. They pinch it off while they change something and put it back on, and they only have to bleed a little bit. That's, there's no one stepping on the brake pedal causing pressure on the backside of that vice grip. So I don't know. I don't know how well that'll hold up on a soft line. I don't I mean, know. It, it'll hold up with a vice grip. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, worst case scenario, the, the soft lines are only at your, your wheel areas. You go see where that hard line is just prior to that. And you can bend and crimp that. I mean, it's going to be a lot more of a pain to replace that hard line, but you yeah. can crimp hard line up higher. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think if you can do it, you should just crimp off the soft line and, leave your vice grips on the yeah, soft yeah. one to get you home. Cause then, yeah, it's much easier to replace than, uh, than mm -hmm. trying to do a, you know, get a flare tool and flare your brake line and 
put a new hard line. That's not fun. Yeah. No, not at all. Nope. Well, only if we had Andy here because he would he's got this one covered. A tie rod. You can winch that sucker back in. Uh sometimes you can you might be able to straighten it out if it's tacoed. Um I've seen guys use pipe um in in and if it's like an inner outer thing. Um like they've cut like a high lift jack handle and slid it over, welded it together type stuff. Not fun. So yeah, that's specifically a tie rod, not the ends. Yeah. 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 Uh tie rod end. Broke, yeah, what if you broke a tie rod end? Oh, um might be able to drill it and throw a nut nut and a bolt through it. Potentially. Potentially. Is that is that what we lost a nut on your Jeep, Jeremy, when you were down here? Uh was that a tie rod? Yeah, it was I can't remember if it was the tie rod or the drag link. I think it was the drag link. It was the drag link. Yeah, I think it was the drag link. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so what did we do there? So we, I, this, this is kind of close. So on the, on that one, we ended up just, thankfully I, I had a reversed, reverse drag link. So instead of coming in from the bottom, it came in through the top. And so we just kind of tied a strap down to keep the drag link from popping out again and we drove that sucker home going 60 yeah yeah um let's see yeah um yeah if depending upon what it is bend it or do something like that um you did to be fair you did have a uh a GoPro that you were able to position uh, under yes. your rig and what we, you were able to watch it live from your cell phone as you drove. So and, that is, that's I, pretty trick until I felt comfortable with, with just letting it go. Yeah. I think the did GoPro you, died eventually, but did you, did you record any of that? Uh, I don't think so. I was just, cause if you start recording, you can't see it. Oh, gotcha. Um, it's really only to try to position the GoPro in the right spot. So, um, it was, it was nice to not know, to know that it wasn't going to just fly out, but yeah. 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 Ooh, here's a fun one. Broken mounts. Uh, this is kind of similar to frame damage in some senses, uh, since it's usually off the mount, the mount is generally the frame side that I've seen. Um, sometimes you'll see axle side ones shear, um, welding them, um, is kind of the answer is 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 the proper fix um but yeah. if it's all twisted and stuff um i've seen ratchet straps and bailing wire and duct tape once used um to kind of just hold stuff together um like if it was a spring mount i've seen um uh what's it called a ratchet strap held in place to hold it up so it wasn't bouncing around too much, but then they also um, sucked in the axle so that that spring wasn't moving as much. Yeah. Well, and, and if it's something like a shock mount, like just pull that shock off, who cares? Yeah. yeah roll, you roll, can but, run with roll with the shock. Yes. Right. But, but again, especially if you, if you're like, uh, you know, not a coil over, but a coil suspension, uh, you, you probably want, cause that shock limits your, your, droop so that way you don't lose your spring out of the spring bucket uh you probably want to limit the limit the travel of the axle yeah so throw a ratchet strap over it like that xj i posted a video of in our group a couple days ago where he came up on that rock and he flexed out and all of his suspension components fell out onto the ground <laughs> yes <laughs> don't do that yeah don't do yeah that. Uh, so another Another th another thing you can do if you've broken, let's say you've got um, IFS up front, and you you've broken a uh, su a suspension mount for your strut or your coilover or whatever, and and you have no way to weld it on, you can shove like if you can get a piece of wood that's the right length or whatever, you use your chainsaw, you cut a log, and you and you, now you have a solid suspension, and then you'd have to ratchet strap your suspension tight. And you you will get zero up and down with that, but you could you could block your 
suspension area somehow. Yeah, with, and uh, that, that would be enough to kind of get you moving and off the trail. You really yeah, want you to lock that in place, especially if you've got a CV axle up there. Um, you don't yeah. want that wood coming in contact with that tire or with that CV axle. Nope. Um, lots of ratchet straps for that one. Manual hubs, Jeremy. That's 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 one you should know a little about. Yeah, I mean, definitely a spare again would be the best. But uh, most manual hubs are going to break in the open position. So worst case scenario, you you're running without the without a hub um, or without full four wheel drive some some hubs you can buy i can't remember the exact brand but I, I know there's at least one that uh when it breaks it breaks in the closed position um hmm. which is kind of neat um so just something to think about uh generally you're just going to want to replace it though as quickly as you can yep <laughs> Oh, Eric, Eric's finally in the comments. I yeah. missed you earlier. Eric, I told a story about a Cadillac and a leaking gas tank and bubble gum. So you'll have to go back and listen to the podcast later on. You'll know exactly who I'm talking about. Plus, I love so the Toyota 8. Yes. <laughs> um, broken leaf pack. So uh, I have to raise my hand on this one because this happened to my camp trailer. Not my big camp trailer, but my Overland one that I built. Um, so, yeah, broken leaf pack. Uh, I have seen people, when they when they break their leaf pack and it goes all the way through, sometimes it's just a broken leak, leaf, and you can just put some uh, clamps around it and just kind of limp it and go ginger. But if you break all the way through your leaf pack, um, I have seen people weld some stuff in there and also block the suspension kind of like what i was talking about earlier so that you you aren't cycling those leafs up and down um and and you can limp it back that way or if you have broken your leaf pack and you don't have a way you could um <laughs> tim says maybe if i didn't flip my trailer it wouldn't have broken uh, this was actually different uh same trailer but different leafs because i had actually changed my axle out and got some different leaves but yeah that was the i gotta say that was the only part on my trailer that i didn't like custom fab myself and it was the part that broke was my leaf springs but maybe it's because i overloaded it too who knows um yeah so you can you can eliminate the suspension completely if you block a piece of wood and ratchet strap it tight as well so that's that's another way you can deal with a broken leaf back uh, I feel we miss something um, with like a broken wheel and a leaf pack. This kind of falls into it. Um, you could do the whole log drag thing. Replacing yeah. It. Yeah, that's true. You can do the log drag. Yeah. Um, and that's that's where like you would uh, use use a bunch of rap, ratchet straps, rope or whatever, and tie it to the the axle. And I feel for like a broken leaf pack, you would actually put that between the frame and the axle to um, prevent, like you said, blocking it from cycling. Yeah. I'm not, uh, I like the idea behind that, but I am a little concerned about damaging trails and stuff by how heavy your vehicle is and is dragging a gouge into the trail. I don't know. I'm Maybe I'm being a wimp about uh, treading lightly or something, but I don't know. I mean, if it's getting you off the trail so that your rig doesn't get braided yeah. and burned by the the people that like to do that. Yeah, if I definitely wouldn't have a problem. It was like a forest service road. You're driving on a dragging it down a forest service road. They're going to grade those and whatever else. But if it's just like a out in the nature trail or something, you're cutting a big groove in the ground with your log. I don't know. Go back and fix it later. Make maybe it. you maybe you have a snowboard with you also, and you can put your snowboard underneath it and. <laughs> It'll, it'll act like a ski. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, let's see. Um, oh, yeah. Broken oh, C-clip so axles. Yeah. Tim mentions a broken C-clip axle. Um, you can use a log to keep that tire on. I saw that in a TV show a long time ago where they broke a C-clip and they like strapped something to the outside of their Jeep 
so that the tire couldn't walk out farther. They strapped like a log to the outside of the Jeep. One car too so far. Tire, I think that's what it was. Yeah. That's so the, the yeah. So the tire would the tire would like float in and out, but couldn't go beyond that log that was strapped to the outside. Yeah. They actually make a uh, recovery tool for that where it's like a pipe with bearings. So on each side of it, so you don't wreck your tire with that. Mm. Um, it straps to the frame and then there's like bearings on a pipe that allow it to spin opposite directions. Interesting. But, but seriously, if you're hardcore wheeling something with C clips, like think about just replacing that. Replacing it. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the obvious thing is to, replace an upgrade but i mean sometimes that's not a feasible feasible option no, I, I, I get it axles. but just like don't, don't wheel a hardcore wheel a c-clip axle like if you don't wheel it it's hard sure but i wouldn't throw 35s on a c-clip and go and yeah rock ball. you're just asking for it at that point yeah well and this last one, it's one I'm all way too familiar with. This loose bolt's falling out. Um, and uh, actually, if Koi was here, I, I'd poke fun at him and say he's used to it too. Because uh, Koi lost a tra trailing arm bolt. And we spent, uh, what did we spend, Aaron? About an hour looking for it? Probably an hour looking for it, yeah. We, we walked back and looked around because he knew the moment he felt it go. Um, and a first step would be look for that bolt and hope you find it, um, and see if you've got a spare bolt. Um, and that was a problem both Koi and I had, there was no spare bolt that fit. Um, so have your tools along with you. That's when we pull out the drill. Um, and it, it dip, well, depending upon what happens, uh, for me, it was the spindle. We drilled through the spindle and hammered mm -hmm. an extension through the plan was to uh put a, a hole in that um that uh, extension extension and put a cotter pin in so like a a, a trailer pin hitch pin um mm -hmm. to help hold that cotter pin in or a uh but we actually ended up welding a socket to it which is you don't always have a welder uh, fortunately for me, there was a guy that happened to be rolling by with the welder and was like, Hey, you, you need anything welded? <laughs> so Eric says, Eric says, step two, fly a kite. And I think that we did that while we were <laughs> waiting for the rail fix. Yes, uh, I, I think it's like, yeah, Ben broke his kite out and started flying a kite while we were waiting. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I forgot all I mean, about that. I, hey, I, I did go look. I looked for a while. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm done looking. I'm flying a kite now. I had my pocket kite, my uh, my door. So I was like, oh, I might as well use it. I paid for it, right? Yeah. What What if Ben actually found it and he just wanted to watch Koi freak out? And so he just held on to it. And he was like, I'm just going to go fly this kite and see what Koi does. <laughs> uh, yeah. So no. actually, when I was when I was snow wheeling a year ago with some buddies, um, he lost a bolt out of a suspension part also acting as actually a steering part. yeah it was a steering part because his tires just towed in really bad uh, or one side towed in really bad and uh, we never found the bolt and obviously it's in the snow it's hard to find it in snow um, and we used a trailer hitch pin itself um, there we had a hitch pin that was long enough to uh, to work for that part so kind of nifty yeah it's it's always nice to have nifty parts like that right yeah and and if there if it doesn't take much weight then you might be able to pound a stick through yeah. but i would use I'm that sparingly sure. only if it doesn't yeah. have much weight yeah i'm not sure what all you could use a stick that wasn't critical how many components could a stick yeah. hold yeah now i want to do some testing <laughs> yeah there you go all right. Well, maybe we need to do an episode on what spare parts you should keep in your rig. Since we've covered spare tools and now the types of brakes, maybe we need to do a uh, what kind of spare parts you should keep and how big of a trailer you'll need to pull behind you to hold all those spare parts. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, thank you everybody who's uh, stuck out for this uh, super exciting episode where we outed ourselves for all the things that we've broken on our rigs. Um, <laughs> and uh, we also liked hearing what you guys had in the comments too for uh, what you've done to fix things or what you've seen broken as well. And uh, Tim, big shout out to you for reminding me of one car too far TV show. I got to look that up and I think I'm going to rewatch that one. Check it back out. So see yeah. where now, now that I'm off-roaded since I've watched that show, because I don't think I was into off-roading back then. It's an old show. Yeah, uh, it was, I, can, uh, I remember watching it um, when it was on TV and all the stuff that we made fun of, because it was like, why didn't they just call it a Jeep? But they wouldn't call it a Jeep. Yeah, I'll have to watch it so I can make fun of it, because I'm sure that it's made for television entertainment kind of a thing. So oh, yes. I'll check it out. So anyways, we appreciate you guys. Thanks for coming on. Uh, make sure you're sharing us with a friend. Make sure you're going to our YouTube page and, and subscribe in there. And if you haven't go check out our Facebook group, off-road podcast fans. Um, if you're not a fan of us, let us know what we should really name the page because that is still just a name placeholder until someone comes up with something good. Um, maybe we'll send you one of our new, a lumen locker patches uh if we get a good one good idea so thanks for helping us grow god bless america don't forget to visit patriot patch and join the patch of the month club check out our gaia affiliate link for up to 40 percent off also don't forget to head over to warren medical gear outfitters and colby valve to see all their great gear we are a proud part of the firearms radio network Got a comment or question? Send it to us through our webpage at firearmsradio.net or through our social media channels by searching for Off-Road Podcast. Also, you can listen to us live at overlandradio.com Mondays at 7 p.m. Pacific. When off-road, please remember to have fun, tread lightly, be safe, and courteous. Thanks for listening. Tim suggested Off-Road Podcasts Anonymous. What's the trail fix for falling in a ditch?